Hi, welcome to Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box just down below the video. I'm most active over on Instagram where you'll find me as both Rainbow Ange and Yarn and Yarns. And here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting and spinning and crochet for the most part. I'm out and about today. If you follow me over on Instagram, that we've been on holiday this week and we had um, a lovely week up in the Yorkshire Dales which is in the north of England. I'm back home now and I have the use of the hire car for just today. I'm a few miles down the coastline from where I live in the Vale of Glamorgan in South Wales and I'm at Ogmore Castle, that's what you can see in the background. Ogmore Castle was built in the time of the Normans and as you can see it's just ruins behind me now. I'm not going to record the entirety of my video because I am battling with the wind a little bit today. I do want to say a big thank you to my coffee donators. Um, I have, through my coffee page, been able to fund the tripod that my camera is standing on now um, and a wireless microphone which has arrived but I haven't yet had a chance to play with it. I only just got back from my holiday yesterday um, so I just thought that I would pop out and do a quick introduction and then hopefully by next week I'll be up and running with that microphone as well. I said I'd be completely transparent with regards to the donations that I received through that page. Um, so I've received a total of £15 since the last time I mentioned the coffee donations, which means I'm well on the way to funding my next goal, which is a studio light. So when I do have to record indoors, hopefully the lighting will be a little bit better. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed coming to Ogmore with me. Um, I am battling a little bit with the wind. <laughs> Hopefully a microphone will help that in future, so I hope the sound hasn't been too bad. I can cobble together an introduction to my video. I'll pop in a little bit more video of the castle and the surrounding area before I start chatting about the projects that I worked on while I was away. there's usually some stepping stones across the river but there's been quite a lot of rain recently so they're mostly covered up <laughs> so no trekking across the river for us today I hope you enjoyed that little introduction to the video and the wind interfering with the sound wasn't too annoying. I really wanted to get out and take advantage of the fact that I had a car for a few hours today, try and get to somewhere that I don't usually get to go to. And the microphone arrived while we were away, so I haven't had a chance to set it all up and kind of get to grips with it. Hopefully that will help the sound when I'm out and about in future but I guess I will try and have a play with that and get to grips with it over the coming week. I'm really lucky to have been able to have the opportunity to get away and have a break, um, as I know some people aren't able to do that, but it brings with it its own sort of set of extra work. Um, I don't know if you agree, um, but you have to sort of get yourself packed and ready and everything clothes-wise ready to sort of take. 
Um, and then when you come back, there's all the washing and unpacking and trying to get back into to routine. So I'm sure I'll catch up over the next few days. And on that note, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has messaged me on Instagram, Ravelry, people who left comments on the previous YouTube video. Um, I have seen and read all of those comments and messages. I just haven't had a chance to reply to everyone yet. So I'm hoping I will do. I'm hoping that I'll catch up over the next few days. I wanted to try and get um, a video recorded today and to try and stick to my usual schedule. So yeah, things are all topsy-turvy at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll catch up. <laughs> I have some spinning and some knitting to share with you. There's not as much as I anticipated there might be. Before we went away, the weather forecast was atrocious for the week that we were away. Um, it was basically forecasted to rain all week. I envisioned that we might be spending a lot of time inside hanging around and chatting and I'd be able to do a lot of crafting but we were very very lucky and we only had a few um, sort of showers really um, no persistent rain and we were able to spend a lot of time out and about so that meant not as much crafting got done but that is absolutely fine um, it just means that it'll probably be a shorter video this week I know I promised you last week there would be some crochet but I left the crochet that I wanted to show you at the shop and I'm not going to have access to that until tomorrow and as I say I really wanted to try and stick to my schedule and trying to get back into the routine of things get a video out to you today so instead I've just got knitting and spinning <coughs> I'm gonna start with spinning because that should be fairly quick to rattle through um, I took away with me my really basic drop spindle. Um, this was the first drop spindle I ever purchased. It was a kit from Hilltop Cloud. Um, it came just this spindle plus a couple of bumps of fibre, which I have long since spun up. And so I took this one away because I'm not worried about it dropping and getting damaged. Um, but it's a really good spindle to spin on too. I did forget to take with me um, any storage bobbins. <laughs> And I'm giggling because if you followed along here for any length of time, you know when I say storage bobbin, what I really mean is an empty loo roll. <laughs> so I managed to steal one of these um, from a cafe in Bowness. <laughs> yes, I am a stealer of cardboard tubes. <laughs> So I do actually have an almost finished spin um, here. I don't know if you can see under there, look, um, there's a slightly different colour peeking through. And I had about 10 grams of that sort of minty green fibre and I spun through that quite quickly. So I moved on to uh, the second lot of fibre that I pulled out of the bag of stuff that I'd taken with me. It's another lovely greeny colour and there's 30 grams of this all together. So I'm working my way through spinning this. As you can see, I've got a fair bit on the storage bobbin and a fair bit on the spindle. I've just got that left to do. So I'm hoping actually, um, while I'm editing this later, I will um, spin this up and I can get them wound off and plied. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what these fibres are. I suspect they are merino. I purchased them in a grab bag from Woolly Knit at Wonderwall this year. Um, so there was no, no fibre details, but um, they kept me happily spinning away as we were away last week. On the subject of spinning, before I move on, I had a couple of requests um, just before I went away and I think one of the messages I received while I was away um, asking if I would do some spinning tutorial videos and I will certainly put up some separate spinning content videos but I'm going to hesitate to call them tutorials because I am by no means any kind of expert in spinning um, but I'm happy to show you what I do so I will try and get some um, recorded for people who have asked. Um, I've had requests for both drop spindling and um, for a bit more detail on my spinning wheel and how I use it. So uh, I'll try and get those and upload those as separate sort of small vlog episodes um, because I know not everyone is interested in the spinning side of things. <coughs> on to knitting. I have one almost finished object to show you and two works in progress. I didn't touch my colour work sweater at all. I took it with me, but the opportunity just didn't really arise. As I say, we didn't really spend a huge amount of time indoors. 
and which counts on that jumper uh, quite big. Um, so I really, if I want to work on that, I really feel like I need a good chunk of at least an hour or so to kind of get into the rhythm and get a few rounds done. But mostly my knitting time was either first thing in the morning while we were waiting for everyone to get ready. Um, James's parents came away with us. So there were four of us all together. So um, yeah, it sometimes took a little while for everyone to be up and ready to start the day. So I was usually able to grab a few rows of knitting time or a little bit of spinning time in the morning. And then again in the evening, I was often able to grab half an hour here and there. Um, I'll probably pop in some pictures and maybe a few videos from our trip at the end here. Um, but I'm conscious that I've already popped in a big chunk of video from my morning this morning so um, I don't want to kind of overwhelm people with that so I'll put that at the end um, for people who are interested um, but then if you're not then you can obviously just skip that. So for my almost finished object I have my rice slip hat. Now if you watched the travel knitting vlog um, I had cast on the um, brim of this hat which was knit separately and started on that before I went away but I've finished all of the knitting and this is what the hat looks like it hasn't been soaked and blocked yet I definitely need to do that um, so yeah as you can see this is the band that I started with this is like a seed stitch band um, with a bit of an overlap and then um, you pick up all around and knit up for the main body of the hat so I need to give this a good block um, and obviously finish it off. <laughs> There's ends hanging out and I need to secure um, some sort of button or um, little feature on here just to finish it off. I knit this hat with my hand spun yarn so I'm so so pleased with it. This is the Pay de Gaulle colourway from Hilltop Cloud which was this year's Tour de Fleece special colourway. Um, sadly um, not to be dyed again. Um, I spun this as a traditional three ply so I just split the braid horizontally into three sections and then um, spun and plied those together and then knit them up. And as you can see I've almost got a self striping um, at least for this hat um, effect out of the yarn. The pattern is by Woolly Wormhead. Uh, there's a slight textured effect to it but it doesn't really show up um, massively well um, in this variegated um, sort of hand spun but I think you can sort of see pearl bumps every now and then. Uh, so yeah I just need to do the finishing touches and then hopefully it will be a finished finished object to show you next week. Um, but yeah, lots of fun memories, both in the spinning and, of course, um, lots of fond memories of my holidays um, knit into this hat. So, <laughs> I thought I'd just quickly pop the hat on to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. But, of course, at the moment, it looks pretty damn ridiculous. <laughs> so, this kind of overlappy flap needs to be secured down. Um, but you get the idea. <laughs> You get the idea. Uh, I just wanted to just kind of put it on just to show you the sort of shape. Um, and as you know, I'm not afraid of looking ridiculous for you guys and girls out there. I've got a little bit of yarn left over just this much and also another little mini skein um, so this one was the traditional three ply and then this little mini skein was um, some chain plied yarn that I worked with the leftovers once one of the bobbins ran out so I think there might be enough to do a little stripe in my hand spun shawl my Stephen West Helic um, so the leftovers will probably go into that the hat was knit on 3.75 millimetre needles for the most part and I used my Likey or Liquor interchangeables. Um, so there they are if you've not seen those before. Um, these are the indigo ones which have a sort of blue tinge to them. I love these needles, they're so nice and smooth. Um, I just, yeah, I really enjoy working with those. Project um, lived in my tweed sort of off cut bag that I made for myself quite some time ago now. The second project that I took away with me saw quite a lot of work 
and it is my pair of socks that I started from the Crazy Zalba Ball. Uh, this was colourway 1702. This is quite an old ball of yarn. It's one of the oldest sock yarns in my stash. So I have no idea whether this colourway is still available, but it's a really nice, fun, sort of bright rainbow of colours. And I've almost finished the first sock. I'm just down to the toe. I've got a couple of rounds left on the toe before I can kitchener that shut. And as you can see, uh, it's a really fun kind of riot of colours. Um, so I'm pleased to have got a little bit of sock knitting mojo back. This has definitely rekindled um, my sock knitting spark, I think. I've um, put in some waste yarn for uh, a heel there. I didn't want to interrupt the colour flow because it's sort of like a mild sort of changing effect. I didn't want there to be a really abrupt line um, from putting in, say, a fish lips kiss heel from the same yarn. So I thought I'd go back and pop that in afterwards. So um, yeah, I think I might finish this sock this evening. Get the second sock cast on and then I will have some cinema knitting ready to go whenever I next take a trip to the movies. That project is living in my rather gruesome zombie cat bag. <laughs> and then my final project is the Drifter Shawl by Tammy Gore and I'm knitting this out of two yarns sent to me by a lovely friend. Um, my main colour is this beautiful yarn which she actually dyed herself and it's absolutely stunning. It's this sort of browns colours with these um, sort of raspberry speckles peppered in, knitting up beautifully. And then I'm pairing that with a yarn sent to me by the same friend um, from Easy Knit. And the Easy Knits colourway is called Leaf Crackle. It's their Cherish base, which is 801010 um, Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon. It's the Leaf Crackle colourway. And I think, I, I know I showed you this um, in my sort of preparation for a travel knit video, and it was just a little sort of triangle to start with. Um, so I managed to get a fair amount of this shawl done. So it's an asymmetrical shawl, um, starts down here with the main colour. Can you see what I mean about the gorgeous um, sort of peppering of those raspberry speckles in amongst those brown and beigey colours? It's just knitting up stunningly. And I really, really loved this colour combination um, when it was sent to me in a little package that I received. So I knew that they had to be in a project together and I'm just loving how they are working up. So uh, there's a slip stitch section here um, and I think the colours work beautifully together. And I'm going into a bit of a stripe section now. So I'm gonna get some bolder sections of the leaf crackle colourway. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I think as I go further now, I'm going to get some bigger sections of the leaf crackle colourway. Um, so, yeah, very much enjoying working on this project. Really excited to see it come to fruition. I've almost reached the widest part of the shawl. I think I've got a few more increases to go. Um, and then I believe the shawl sort of stays around the same sort of stitch count, but you increase and decrease to make the, the shape. So, yeah. That is my progress on the Drifter, and as I say, that's designed by Tammy Gore. Um, Tammy Gore's got some fantastic shawl patterns. Um, if you've not come across her before, um, I would urge you to go and check out her designer page. Um, I think I'm enjoying this knit a lot, um, probably a lot to do with the yarn combination. I don't know if you can hear that, it's just started to rain. We've had blue skies all afternoon. <laughs> The weather is so changeable. Um, what was I saying? Yes, Tammy Gore. Um, I'm enjoying this pattern so much and I can see myself making some more of her shawl patterns in the future. The project is living in another Me Made project bag. Um, I made a few of these. Um, when we first moved here, I had an Etsy shop for a little while and I made a few project bags and I made a few cat bags. Um, so this is one that I kept for myself. 
so the drifter shawls living in in that bag that's it that's the extent of my content this week i feel like it's been really light but um i hope you don't mind because i was busy enjoying myself and having a lovely break i just managed to pick up a couple of souvenirs while we were away we went to the yorkshire dales which is in the north of england beautiful beautiful countryside um if you've ever been um you'll know what i mean and if you haven't and you ever get the chance um i would urge you to to snap it up and go i love where i live if the opportunity ever arose i would move to yorkshire in a heartbeat <laughs> my heart is definitely there we were staying right on the edge of the yorkshire dales national park um technically we were staying in cumbria um in a just outside of a really small town i think it's a town called sedbra there's not really much there which is why i hesitate to to call it a town because it's literally just a street of a few shops stayed outside of that in a tiny little hamlet which was one row of cottages absolutely beautiful in the town of sedbra we came across a little craft shop i guess it was one of those craft collectives there were lots of different handmade items for sale in that shop and i think the shop is manned by the people who sell their items and it just so happens that the lady who was on duty i guess on saturday um was a knitter crocheter spinner weaver and i came away with a braid of some of her beautiful hand dyed fibers so this doesn't have a company name as such um it's just got the craft workshop which is where it was being sold on the label but i purchased a braid of blue face leicester tops um approximately 100 grams and i think when i hold this up and show you it'll be no surprise to those of you who know me why this one came home with me <laughs> isn't that gorgeous and i love blue face leicester i'm pretty sure that the tops that she had for sale weren't local she had a few um different types of tops there was some shetland that i was really tempted by um but in the end it was the colors of this one and uh, when i saw it, it was blue face leicester that was just the sort of thing that sealed the deal really uh, the fibre looks like um, it might need a little bit of TLC as I start spinning it. There are a few bits that look like they may be slightly felted. Um, but I was really happy to purchase this braid and support the lovely lady that I met. We had a good conversation um, about knitting and spinning. So that was the first souvenir that came home with me. Um, on that same day, we also visited um, a place called Fairfield Mill. Um, so this was on the Saturday, the last day of our trip, and I hadn't really picked up any Yarny souvenirs before then. Um, we haven't really been anywhere where the opportunity arose. We did take a quick trip into Leyburn, and it would have been lovely to visit the Wensleydale Longwall shop. However, they had been affected by the floods that had happened in the Dales a few weeks ago, so the shop was sadly closed. Um, while they were waiting to get repaired and sorted out after the floods so I wasn't able to um, do any damage in there but on the Saturday um, before we left it also happened to be my birthday that day we went to a lovely place called Fairfield Mill just outside of Sedborough and Fairfield Mill was a traditional woolen mill um, that produced yarns for knitting and for weaving which was a really big industry in that area. Um, it's now a heritage centre and houses a bunch of really lovely little studios where artists can go and work. Um, there's all sorts of things going on in there. There was some knitting and weaving and jewellery making. Um, there was some pottery um, and they also had a big collection of, sort of different historic looms and things like that. So yeah, as you can imagine, I was in my element. Um, and a lot of the studios that were dotted around the centre had items for sale so I picked up a few things as I went round and James very kindly treated me to them at the end as a birthday gift. One of the first things that I picked up is this covered badge from Laura's Loom um, and I thought 
so this is a piece of hand woven sort of off cut uh, that she's put onto one of those kind of make your own button badge type things and I thought that might make the perfect finishing to my rice lip hat so obviously I needed to take it off the card but I think there's enough contrast um, to show up against the colours in the brim of that hat um, but that sort of tweedy effect is kind of in keeping with the hat overall so I think once I've sort of woven in my ends and tacked this down I'll pop that on and see if I like that as a finishing touch to that hat so that's kind of the plan for that button but I'm not 100% decided on that yet the second thing that I picked up was a piece of fabric um, that was actually woven at the mill from some of their lambs wool um, they had this for sale by the meter but it's very expensive um, but they had some smaller pieces so I picked up a piece that would be big enough to make myself a project bag um, so it's this really lovely blue plaid uh, woven fabric um, and as I say I shall be at some point hopefully in the not too distant future making myself a souvenir project bag and I should have enough I think for um, if I pair it with uh, sort of something else similar to what I've done here if I can get some blue um, to match this and I think I should be able to trim a little bit off and make myself a notions pouch as well from this one piece of fabric um, so yeah I was really happy to bring away a piece of fabric that had been produced at the mill. The next thing I picked up was a lovely bat from a place called the Hobby House and in that little studio there was tons of really gorgeous fibre and I could have brought home a lot of it. Um, to be honest if I'd have known James was paying <laughs> When I went around collecting my souvenirs, I would have picked up more. <laughs> uh, but he didn't tell me that till we got to the cash register. So anyway, the one, the bat that caught my heart was this one. And this is 95 grams. It just says mixed fibres. Um, and it's a really lovely sort of muted rainbow. And it's packaged in this lovely piece of what looks to be handmade paper. Um, with all of the details on there um, so I'm really excited to see what kind of yarn uh, this makes when I get around to spinning it. The last two purchases came from the same producer and this was a stand called B Textile. Now I had spotted this on the first pass because um, the floor that you enter the mill on is um, mostly there's a few little studios but that's the area where there's a lot of goods for sale and then on various other floors there are more sort of studio space in the sort of weaving looms collection um but i was wandering around and i saw this gorgeous braid of corridale and those colors just leapt right out at me and i knew that it had to come home with me so it was one of the first things that i spotted as we were going around so i knew i had to go back and claim that so it's, yeah 100 grams of hand painted corridale fiber so yeah another lovely spin in prospect and then from the same producer um she also i'm i'm saying she i don't know i'm assuming shouldn't really assume should i they also had some hand dyed yarns and I wasn't planning on bringing in any yarn home, mostly because I have a lot of hand dyed yarn, I have a lot of singles gain. I'm actually planning on having a D stash in the not too distant future um, because I want to raise some money to purchase an e-spinner if I can. So I wasn't really in the market for bringing any hand dyed yarn, but um, James kind of twisted my arm and uh, said that I should come home with at least one souvenir skein. So I had a dig through and picked up this gorgeous specimen. Isn't that lovely? Um, there are gorgeous sort of mustardy tones in there and some blues. Um, this is 85% seed wash merino, 15% nylon, and uh, it is colourway Murney. I don't know if you can see that, Murney. And the skein is just absolutely beautiful. She had a couple in this colourway, um, but this one had the highest concentration of that sort of mustardy brown, which I absolutely fell in love with. So yes, I'm very lucky. I brought home some really nice souvenir slash birthday gifts. I'm pretty sure I'll get a lot of pleasure when I get round to working with them.
Right, I'm going to wrap up the chatting. Bling. I will pop in um, some videos and maybe a few photos from our trip for anyone who's interested. But um, I'm going to sign off here. If you're not interested in that, you can obviously choose to, to skip over the end. Thank you so very much for joining me. I really do appreciate your company. I hope that this week you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. And until next time, great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.